So we know at CES 2025, AMD decided not to discuss anything pertaining to their next generation RDNA 4 RX 9070 series graphics cards. There's a few theories floating around as to why they did. However, some folks in the tech press actually had managed to get a quote-unquote hands-on preview of the graphics cards, along with testing out some new features. This has yielded some more information and honestly seems a bit promising, which further perplexes me as to why they completely omitted RDNA 4 from their keynote. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. CES 2025 is basically at its conclusion. There was a whole bunch of cool new tech that was showed off along with hardware. So from fancy OLEDs, cool new robot vacuums with arms on them. And along with that, what seems to have everyone buzzing are new graphics cards. Now I've made a video covering the NVIDIA RTX 50 series announcement, dissecting the series with the new features along with my thoughts and opinions on it. So feel free to check that video out. What I wanted to discuss now was AMD's RDNA 4 RX 9070 series GPUs because there's been some more information that's come out at CES not directly from AMD and it's been quite intriguing to say the least. It's just perplexing to me because when AMD held their keynote it was around a 40 minute presentation and they didn't bother to include really anything pertaining to RDNA 4, the RX 9070 series, and FSR 4. So my initial reaction just like everyone else was baffling. AMD had sent out slides to the tech press, including information about those products, and even had set up demos at their booth on the uh, showroom floor, giving some people a bit more insight as to how the series works, some new features, and all of that. When you take a look at their presentation, it's exactly 41 minutes and 40 seconds long. Right at the start, they have a 9 minute section that talks about gaming, but spent about 6 minutes talking about the 9950X3D, which in my opinion, they could have spent like 2 minutes on, as it's basically a 9950X with 3D vCache. We know it's going to be a good processor as it will have solid workstation capabilities like the regular 9950X, since it still maintains fast clock speeds and will offer gaming performance that's similar to the 9800X3D, granted there's no scheduling issues. And then they had a segment with Microsoft's Matt Booty just talk about a whole bunch of nothing, promote Xbox stuff, and just basically say Xbox games will support AMD features. This is something they could have easily omitted. They then had roughly a 12 minute section talking about AI PCs and mobile chips, which you know I get is important. There's going to be a whole bunch of new laptops coming out and AMD wants to further increase market share with OEMs. But then after that, the remaining 16 minutes or so were just spent on circle jerking with executives from other companies and nothing really concrete coming out of it. And including stuff about enterprise, which you're at CES, like it's called the Consumer Electronics Show. Not saying that they should have omitted all of this, but come on, this really could have been like a three to five minute session at most. So AMD could have easily dedicated half the keynote time to RDNA 4, the 9070 series, and showcase some new features like FSR 4. I think that would have gave them plenty of time to outline some key upgrades with the architecture and move on to gaming performance, and then also talk about the advantages of FSR 4, which will have upscaling and frame generation capabilities powered by AI similar to NVIDIA's DLSS 4, but they chose not to do any of that for some odd reason and that's just baffling. Now after the keynote there was sort of a roundtable open discussion with some AMD managers and some members of the tech press. This article was posted by Ian Cutris, formerly from Anontech, at the More Than More website. The managers were grilled about why they didn't bother talking about RDNA 4 and some of these answers just feel like a cop-out, stating they felt like CES was is it the right place to give that information? Um, we're talking about CES. It stands for Consumers Electronics Show, not Enterprise Electronics Show. And to add insult to injury, they mentioned how they didn't want to spend five minutes on it, which basically admits to how they have poor time management skills because spending 16 minutes of time with other executives saying a whole bunch of nothing is more important apparently. And they also mentioned how they think that the timing wasn't right, which also doesn't make sense to me as you have an opportunity with one of the biggest spotlights of the year, but chose to just spend it on reaffirmations with partnerships. 
Ian also asked if they were delaying it due to supply or manufacturing issues but was told no and then he also asked if the delay had anything to do with better aligning the series with what Nvidia would be launching and he was also told no. Which I'm going to call bullshit on. We've seen over these past few generations AMD has always announced their stuff after Nvidia. Their pricing always seems to align with whatever Team Green announces. You guys remember when they announced RDNA 1 and then after Nvidia announced the RTX 20 Super Series at prices lower than expected, AMD panicked and quickly revised prices and decided to hide behind a meme, debated, saying this was the plan all along. The truth is that they caught a wind of what Nvidia was going to do in terms of the pricing for the RTX 5070 and decided to hold off on it. Otherwise, it just doesn't make sense to not talk about it at all and give the press slides, including the series. Their partners are also teasing models and then they are also showcasing them on the floor and their staff are allowing some in the press to get a hands-on opportunity with the new series. So then why the whole secrecy? There's more stuff included in the article pertaining to FSR 4 and even Intel's Battle Mage, so I recommend you guys check it out, but I wanted to highlight what Frank and David both stated, that the performance figures that were supposedly leaked online and the information out there is inaccurate, stating that nobody has access to any final retail drivers so that the data can't be accurate. Oh no, I've heard this one before and it's been used by AMD fanboys a lot. You guys remember Vega? How so many people were like, wait for the drivers, wait for fine wine. It's crazy when they stuff like this, it just doesn't help. But this leads me into what I wanted to talk about next, and this was a benchmark posted by IGN where they got a hands-on preview of the RX 9070 XT. The game that they tested was Call of Duty Black Ops 6, and they used the game's built-in benchmark at 4K using extreme quality settings, and claimed that these tests were done without any upside scaling. Also the CPU that was tested was the unreleased 9950X3D. Not too concerned about that as the gaming performance will basically be on par with a 9800X3D. The results that they achieved was a 99 FPS average. Upon a first glance that is a very good result. Because if you scour for benchmarks on YouTube, you'll find stuff like this from a channel called Frostburn, and you can see that they tested an overclocked RTX 4090 with the extreme settings at 4K, along with a tuned 13900K, 8200CL34 memory, and attained 94 FPS average, no upscaling or frame generation. Let's dissect this a bit further, because we know that the Call of Duty engine seems to favor AMD hardware more, especially their GPUs. Tech Power Up did GPU testing with Black Ops 6, and found in their testing the 7900XTX was about 20% faster than the 4080 Super and just 13% slower than the 4090. This means that the 9070 XT would be faster than both a 4090, the fastest GPU from Nvidia's previous lineup, and AMD's previous generation flagship, the RX 7900 XTX. Take this result with a tiny speck of salt because something seems off to me. Now other hardware reviewers also went back and tested this like Daniel Owen and Hardware Canucks and they found that their GPUs tested were also showing lower scores but it just doesn't make sense in the GPU hierarchy when you think about it because the 4090 and the 7900 XTX should be faster than the 9070 XT but I mean we won't know for sure until the card is actually out. I think there are two possibilities. The first is that the Call of Duty engine absolutely loves the RDNA 4 architecture. I mean, we already kind of knew that in general, it does like Radeon hardware and thus we're seeing the best case scenario here. Hence, it was the benchmark result that AMD was okay with getting leaked, which is a decent marketing ploy. We've seen outliers like this before. I remember with the 5700 XT, that was pretty much on par with the 2080 Ti and I think it was Forza Horizon 4. The other possibility that I'm leaning towards is that the game was not restarted when some graphic settings were configured and some settings that needed to be turned off and applied did not go into effect. When you select uh, the Call of Duty presets, I noticed that by default it seems to apply upscaling like FSR or even variable rate shading. So I think what's going on is that perhaps the results were artificially inflated due to upscaling. The other possibility is that even if there was no upscaling or frame generation within the game itself, who's to say that perhaps there wasn't any sort of fluid motion frames turned on within the AMD drivers that wasn't disclosed. If you guys are familiar with fluid fr uh, motion frames, that can work within the driver itself for any game, so perhaps that was turned on. Like, there's just way too many unknowns here, and you know what? I'd love to see the RX 9070 be on par with a 4090 or the 7900 XTX and cost like 500 bucks, but I just don't think that's going to be likely, because if it was, 
AMD would be shouting this from the rooftops, they would have included it in their presentation. What seems to add a bit of credence to this though is that there were some leaked 3 d Mark benchmark results posted by video cards, sourcing some members from the Chip Hell forums. According to them, a reviewer from China has leaked some numbers, and they do seem quite promising. Though again, take this with a grain of salt, as you guys can see from the posted GPU-Z screenshot, the card is being mislabeled as an RX 7800X3D, could be due to an error because of no official support yet for this program, or, you know, it just could be BS. When it comes to the benchmarks, there's two results. The first one is from 3 d Mark Speedway, and this benchmark, I believe, uses ray tracing, Hence, we see the 7900 XTX performing worse than a 4070 Ti Super, and the 9070 XT is trailing right behind it. Then we have the regular old Time Spy Extreme result. It's just a raster benchmark at 4K, and we can see here the 9070 XT outperforms the 4080 Super. So that's actually pretty darn good and would coincide with the performance numbers we saw from Black Ops 6. Like, think about it, even if the RX 9070 XT is priced at $600 or $550 and performs like a 40 70 Ti in ray tracing, but offers 4080 Super or 7900 XTX levels of performance in raster, I would see a lot of people being okay with that, as that would most likely make it faster than a 5070 in raster. But again, if that really was the case, why AMD didn't bother to showcase any of this at CES is what is most concerning, and why I'm not so confident about all of these figures or leaks being thrown around. But let's make the situation even more perplexing. So Oliver and Alex from Digital Foundry posted a video talking about how they were at the AMD booth and then got the opportunity to have a first look or hands-on with FSR4. The AMD rep didn't outright say it was FSR4, they were just told it was a research project. But I mean, we all know what this is. The demo they were showcasing was Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart. It was the first level of the game and they showcased some pretty eye-opening comparisons like how the stairs in the demo on the research project were looking a lot sharper and more detailed. One of the big glaring problems with not just FSR but also NVIDIA's DLSS was the ghosting or shimmering problems with objects far in the distance or fast moving objects. So you guys can see during this comparison with the crowd, the FSR 4 side just looks so much more better and cleaner and you don't get any of that weird shimmering as was the case when they were showcasing the confetti that was falling, and stuff like this typically is hard for the upscalers to properly reconfigure. With FSR 3, it looks so fake, and clearly there's details missing, but with FSR 4, it's dramatically better. This is a demo that's similar to what NVIDIA showed for their DLSS Transformer model. This is also great stuff, you guys, and it just, again, baffles me why they wouldn't spend time on their keynote showcasing this, rather than have a snooze-fest high-five session with other executives. I'll have have a link to that video below so definitely check it out. Now Frank Azur sat down with Michael Quesada who has a tech channel from I believe Mexico and they asked Frank a number of questions pertaining to RDNA 4 and the RX 9070 series. It's about a 20 minute long interview and if you speak Spanish you'll probably enjoy it but there was a portion of the interview I wanted to focus on and this translation comes from El Chapuza's website so the wording may be a bit off. Frank states that the Radeon RX 7800 XT and RX 7900 GRE offered an aggressive price for the performance. The market responded well in a market where prices keep rising. AMD keeps thinking about being a company that offers a good value for quality and price. When we announce our DNA 4, we're going to announce a graphics card. Powerful. It's not going to be a $300 card, but it's also not going to be $1,000. We're going to have something that most people will say is a good product at a good price. We think that they're going to like it very much. Its balance of power and price will be similar to that of the RX 7800 XT and RX 7900 GRE. I like how they specifically mentioned those two prices, and I think if you know how to read in between the lines, it perhaps gives us a bit of a clue as to how much the 9070 series will cost. My gut feeling is that AMD is going to either price the 9070 XT at exactly the same price as the 5070, or perhaps charge $50 more, and the 9070 non-XT is just going to cost $50 less and be used as the typical upsell card. So $549 or $599, that's my prediction. And I think AMD probably wanted to price the 97 the 9070 XT, I can't even say that right. The 9070 at $650 because they were confident that Nvidia would be raising the prices for all the SKUs this generation. And what they didn't expect or anticipate was that Nvidia would actually slightly undercut the previous generation prices. Hence that threw a wrench in their plans and pushed back their 
unveiling announcement. At the very least, they could have at least spent a decent amount of time discussing RDNA 4's architecture because it just doesn't apply to the discrete GPUs. Frank did say it'll come to RDNA 3 and they are working on that. So a lot of those mobile chips could also take advantage of it too. And that would be absolutely killer for a lot of the handhelds that are out there. At the end of the day, the decision to skip over RDNA 4 and the RX 9070 series at CES 25 just doesn't make sense. The tech is clearly there. The performance actually looks pretty solid if those leaks are to be believed. And features like FSR 4 are exciting and look like a pretty nice leap. And it just begs the questions, why, why the secrecy? Whether it's poor planning, hesitation about pricing, or something else entirely, this feels like a missed opportunity to get people hyped up. I want to believe AMD has something great in store for us, but their silence isn't instilling folks with confidence. So let's hope they can turn it around before it's too late. Alrighty guys, so that's gonna be doing it for this one. We'll be touching base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.